when I started my career 25 years back, the biggest dream I had was to buy my own house. Most of my friends bought maybe an apartment or a piece of land and within few years, the value nearly doubled. This led to a bad feeling of missing out and I ended up finally buying an apartment somewhere around 2006. If you also want to live in your own house, maybe buy a second one. If you have also been awed by someone around you who has doubled or tripled their money in real estate, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll talk about the typical problem with a rental model. Then we'll cover a controversial topic. Is there any age when you need to live in the best house of your life? Should one buy their own house to live? Should one buy a house as an investment? If you watch videos on YouTube, you would have definitely come across someone who would have said it is not a good idea to buy your own house to live or to rent out. I can assure you with 90% confidence that the person saying this would be a successful businessman or maybe someone who's really successful in his job and gets a huge HRA as a part of his salary. And both these categories can easily afford to buy a dream house at any point in life and they have probably already financially retired. The problem is with average Joe like me and perhaps you who can't just go out and outright buy a house whenever we want. With this background, let me talk about the biggest problem in this model of rentals. It is not difficult to rent out a house. The problem is renting out the house you want to live in. Typically, these dream houses or good houses near your offices, they come with a steep rent. The houses where rents are affordable, they are typically a bit far off from office. Maybe they do not have enough bedrooms. Maybe the amenities in that society are not very high. Maybe the neighborhood is not that great. Also, the rentals at any point of time can shoot up. For example, if in your area a major project is around, maybe something around the highway, maybe a metro line, the rentals may suddenly just double. What will you do? Your income is not doubling. Your HR eligibility is not doubling. Your passive income is not increasing. How will you give double rental or maybe 50% extra rental suddenly? I'm sure this would have happened to you or someone around you for sure recently because rentals in cities like say Bangalore, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Delhi, Pune, Chennai, all major metros have shot up significantly in the post-pandemic period where work from home is ending or has ended. This is a big motivator to live in your own house. At least you will be safe from the problem of rentals increasing beyond your reach suddenly. You can't typically downgrade your lifestyle and go to a cheaper apartment where rental is same as what you were paying earlier, but the lifestyle is lot lower. We all desire to move up in our lifestyle. Next point I want to talk about is, is there any age when you should be living in the best house of your life? I'll give you a very practical insight. There would be a time in life when your kids are getting older towards 8th grade, 9th grade. They would need a room of their own. Also, as they approach their respective college age, their needs to study longer in say the night time, etc. will increase. So if you have two kids, you will probably need two rooms. In the post-pandemic period, it is not uncommon for people to either work from home fully or partially. If that's happening in your house, maybe with you, your spouse or both of you, you probably need an office kind of setup where at least you can take calls, do some serious uninterrupted work. Many of us work in odd time zones. Also, as we grow in age, there may be a time when our parents want to live with us. Very often, when one of your parents expires, the second one moves with you. All those requirements typically peak somewhere between the age of 40 and 50 for most of us, where the requirement for a larger house is the highest. Once your kid leaves for college, they'll be gone for anywhere between three to five or six years. After that, they'll get into a job or start something of their own. They may be in the same city or they may not be in the same city. Eventually, they'll get married as well. They'll be visiting you in their holidays, few times a year, and gradually the frequency will go down. You will perhaps not need a very large house at that stage. I honestly know many of my friends who worked very hard and built beautiful bungalows, beautiful houses, but my friend and their spouse live in that large house alone, spending several crores and nearly a lifetime to achieve their dream. The point I'm trying to make is the largest house is 
very expensive and it takes a very long time to achieve the goal so rather than wait for that maybe when your kids are in the 8th grade 9th grade rent out a lavish house which you can afford near your office which can potentially increase the time you can spend with your family just before the age when your kids fly off the nest save the remaining money to buy the house you desire in the next phase of your life the biggest question does it make commercial sense to live in your own house or even buy it for renting out for passive income we'll not jump into any theoretical gyan here i have built a excel based model with three scenarios first is where you take maximum possible loan from the bank second is when you take partial loan and probably around 50% and rest you fund from your own pocket third is you buy everything cash down which means from your savings for illustration we are assuming that we have bought a property worth 1 crore rupees and over 8 years that has increased to 2 crores in value so if you see the table year 8 has the value 2 cr we are assuming inflation to be at 6% what that means is if in year 7 the value of the property was around 1.89 cr then that is same as 2 cr of year 8 so on in year 6 the number is 1.78 cr year 5 1.68 cr and so on with this we arrive at today's time value of money of 1.25 cr which means that if the property is worth 1.25 cr today then the value increasing to 2 cr is not going to make any difference in terms of inflation now this is not the end of it this is one aspect of the calculation let's jump to the second dimension we'll discuss three case studies the first one we borrowed 70 lakh from the bank for the 1 crore purchase which means we have paid 30 lakh from our pocket to keep things simple i have assumed 7% as the net interest being paid to the bank with that in mind a 70 lakh loan accruing 7% interest per year for 8 years will mean an interest payout of 39 lakh 20000 rupees the cost of your money so you invested 30 lakh from your pocket that money suppose you had invested at roughly 10% cagr then you should have earned 24 lakh rupees on that money but probably you are going to live in that house or get some rental out of it so there will be some sort of saving or income out of it average we are assuming 40000 of saving in terms of rent or getting money for as rental from the property over 8 years that amounts to 38 lakh 40000 rupees the total expense in this case is 24 lakh 80000 which means basically interest paid plus cost of your money minus the money saved similarly if you had borrowed 50 lakh from the bank and 50 lakh you had paid from your pocket the net interest paid would have been 28 lakh the cost of your money would have been 40 lakh the rent saved would have been same 38 lakh 40000 the net expense for you would have been 29 lakh 60000 slightly higher why because you earn at 10% in terms of cagr and you pay 7% to the bank in case two you have reduced the amount you need to pay the bank but that also reduces the saving you have because you have paid more from your pocket the third case study is self funded which means interest paid to the bank is zero cost of your money becomes 80 lakh rupees in 8 years the rent saved or earned is same 38 lakh 40000 the net expense in this case is 41 lakh 60000 let's jump to the third and final dimension now which is what is the value of your 1 cr realistically in case one you borrowed 70 lakh from the bank cash received after you sell your property is 2 cr the cost of transaction which we saw in case 2 is 24 lakh 80000 which is cost of transaction to earn this 2 cr you had to spend 24 lakh 80000 from your pocket inflation cost is 74 lakh 51753 rupees how did we arrive at that cash received minus cost of the property after adjusting for inflation which was 1.25 cr so the inflation cost in case 1 case 2 case 3 will remain same because the cash received is 2 cr and the inflation adjusted cost is 1.25 cr in case 1 your 1 cr effectively becomes 1 cr 68000 247 rupees after 8 years in case 2 where you borrowed 50 lakh from the bank remaining 50 lakh you paid from your pocket the value is 95 lakh 88247 which is 4 lakh approximately less than the value invested in case of self funded the 1 cr becomes 84 lakh this is contrary to the general feeling we all might have that we should be borrowing least amount from the bank and putting most money from our pocket the base assumption obviously is that 
any money you have in your pocket over 8-10 years will be invested for at least 10% kind of CAGR. Realistically, if we plan well and be patient, this can be as big as 14-15% CAGR if the economy in general is growing. Think of the real value of your 1 CR in those cases. Moral of the story, if your economy is doing well, then it will not make economic sense to buy a house to live in because the money can earn a lot more in the money markets like equity. Does that mean you don't buy a house? No, it doesn't. In general, it makes more sense to take highest possible loan from the bank and not prepay it. Use your money rather into better instruments which can fetch you a lot higher return. You can download this Excel using the link available in the first comment below as well as in the description. Three very important points we should consider before taking a decision on buying a property or not. The first one being how far are you from your retirement? The main idea is when you retire, you should not be having a burden on your mind of changing houses continuously or rentals becoming unaffordable. Also, we should not be living with the pain of paying EMIs when there is no paycheck coming. How will you retire if there is EMI pressure? Second point is based upon the years you have left to your retirement, how much control you have on the plan. For example, if you want to retire say at 50, a lot of us do want to retire at 50 or maybe earlier. Then have you made significant investments? Do you have enough corpus in place where you see the end of the tunnel that yes, by 50 or whatever age you desire, you will be having enough reserves, enough investments, enough cash flow to sustain the lifestyle you desire. If you are not in control at all, then adding another pressure to your plan will actually delay your retirement especially buying a very expensive house or buying a house beyond your budget. Now, how do you visualize all this? For this, I have already created a video with an Excel-based model. It is about a financial stress meter that will help you calculate the financial stress at every point in your life and at what stage it is best to take which financial decision. Please do go through this video. I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of this video. The last point I want to talk about is probably the most important in some ways. You have to watch out for currency printing and inflation. What does this mean? If a country prints a lot of currency, just for example, say US probably has 10x of the currency they had maybe 6-7 years back. India has 3x the currency they had just at the time of demonetization. When we print a lot of currency as a country, when the inflation is high, all assets get recalibrated to the new amount of currency in circulation. Think of it like if we are doubling the currency in circulation without increasing the GDP too much, then 100 rupee note earlier will be 200 rupee off now. Real estate prices also will recalibrate to reflect the new value. This will also reflect in rentals. This may be perhaps what's happening in the real estate market right now, whereas in some places property prices have skyrocketed. Not understanding these two factors make completely completely derail your plans if you learned something new in this video then do like it and let me know in the comments below what portion you like best thanks for watching